In this brief video, we're going to be discussing corporations. Corporations represent a very viable form of business ownership and one that are predominantly used by many large businesses, ones that do a higher number of, of sales on an annual basis. Uh, and that is usually to justify the cost of utilizing this type of structure. Uh, but corporations mainly refer to what we call C-corporations. Uh, this is by far the most common form of a corporation. There also are things like LLCs and S-corporations. Uh, but typically when someone uses the terminology of a corporation, they're usually referring to a C-corporation specifically, although they may do it, uh, you know, obviously not knowingly. Uh, so C-corporations comprise the bulk of all corporations. And what a C-corporation does, and what all corporations do for that matter, is they establish the business as a separate legal entity. And what that means is that the business and the owner are considered to be separate. Remember, in a, with a sole proprietorship and a partnership, the owner of the business and the business itself were considered to be kind of one and the same. And so that provided you certain benefits in terms of taxes, but obviously wasn't very good in terms of liability. With the C corporation, we split the two. And so the, the business exists on its own, independent from the owners. And this is beneficial for a number of different reasons. Uh, so C corporations can essentially hold property in their in the business name. Uh, they can sue, they can be sued, they can do a host of other things because they're essentially almost like a person, if you will, uh, just according to kind of tax law and liability and different things. Uh, and so they're a separate legal entity for that very reason. Now, in order to establish a C corporation, and usually all corporations for that matter, uh, the first thing you have to do is complete what we call an Articles of Incorporation. And the Articles of Incorporation uh, simply kind of establishes the basic outline of the company. This is usually filed in the state in which you want to be uh, incorporated in. So if you were going to be doing business predominantly in California, you might incorporate in California. Uh, typically, for the most part, uh, Delaware is usually the most pro-corporate friendly state. They have the law, uh, law, a lot of laws that are kind of pro-business, if you will, which typically runs to the detriment of employees, uh, but they do that to attract corporations to settle there. And so you'll find that a lot of corporations are incorporated actually in Delaware. And so just an example of a couple things that the Articles of Incorporation will include. Uh, typically we'll outline you know, some common things like the name of the company. Uh, it might outline the number of shares that it can be issued. Also probably outline the name of the individuals on the board of directors. And also specify things like location, where the company is going to be based out of. You know, basic, not anything overly specific. Once again, just outlining some of the fundamental information you would need to know about a company. Okay. And now another thing you need to complete is what we refer to as corporate bylaws. There seems to be a lot of confusion with regards to corporate bylaws and, and how they relate to the Articles of Incorporation. Uh, they are in fact separate documents and a, uh, the corporate bylaws are much more specific than the Articles of Incorporation. With the Articles of Incorporation you get really basic information. With the bylaws you're really going to outline the kind of day-to-day different rules of your company as well as the guidelines uh, on how your company is going to keep running smoothly if you will. So some of the specific things that would be included in a, uh, in a corporate bylaw would be outlining the specific duties of each of the board of directors. Uh, you might outline uh, specifically how do you go about electing 
board of directors, right? What's the process that you use? Uh, you might go over how uh, corporate officers are appointed. Specific things like how are meetings conducted? And a few other things as well, right? In, in what situations can you actually amend the corporate bylaws, meaning change the rules that you've already established? So they're much more specific. And so you're really looking at the day-to-day -day operations, the different guidelines that help you run the company. Okay, the specific guidelines, rules, and regulations are typically outlined in the corporate bylaws. Okay, so now that we know how C corporations essentially are created, we need to identify a few people that are actively involved. Um, the first one is what we refer to as the stockholder. Uh, the stockholder is actually technically the owner of a C Corp. Okay, And stockholders, they purchase actual shares of ownership, typically, uh, usually for a certain dollar amount. For publicly traded companies, you can actually purchase shares on an open market, uh, which means that the public is able to purchase them. Uh, so you put forth, let's say, $50 and you receive one share, which is a, a fraction of ownership of this entire corporation. And that entitles you to certain rights, of course. Uh, the biggest of those is that it gives you voting rights. Specifically, to vote on the board of directors. Now because stockholders may not have the expertise necessary to run a company, right? they kind of pass off that, that responsibility to the board of directors. And so they appoint the board of directors, usually through elections, uh, to actually oversee kind of the management of the company and to oversee and represent their best interests. And so the board is designed to represent the interests of the shareholders or stockholders, meaning the people that own shares of the actual company. Uh, so in private corporations, usually by private meaning that they don't sell their stock on an open exchange and you have to obtain it through other means, or a public corporation, meaning you can purchase it through the New York Stock Exchange and go through a broker or a discount brokerage firm like an E-Trade or a Scott Trade or something similar. Uh, so the board, once again, representing our interests designed to oversee management of the company. Uh, now the board is not involved with the day-to-day -day decision making. And so what they do is they will actually appoint our corporate officers. Uh, positions like CEO, for example, or chief executive officer. And so the board will, what they do is they kind of agree on what the overall mission is of the company, right? So what, what, are our, what is our mission? Uh, as well as what are the objectives, right? What are our goals? What are we trying to accomplish? And once they have some type of outline of that, some kind of clear picture of what that looks like, they will go ahead and they'll appoint corporate officers. And those are the individuals that are going to run uh, the day to day. And so they'll maintain more detailed involvement with the company. Typically, the corporate officers will meet with the board of directors, uh, usually at some type of uh, regular interval. Maybe it's a uh, bi-monthly or monthly basis just to update them on operations uh, so they can make sure that the company is moving in a direction that they feel is, is going to increase the likelihood of the business being successful, but also in a manner that protects the interests of the shareholders, which is what their responsibility is. Uh, so now that we know the key players, how a corporation is formed, kind of the structure of it, you know, let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages, of course. Now, uh, this type of format is very complex, can be very expensive, so obviously there has to be some type of benefit from it. Otherwise, who in their right mind would use it? So let's first look at some of the advantages. Uh, the biggest and most notable is going to be limited liability. Because there is a separation between the business and the owners, the owners essentially, which once again, owners of the company are going to be stockholders, 
are only liable for the money that they commit or invest. So for example, if you purchase stock in a publicly traded corporation like a Walmart or McDonald's and you invest, let's say $1,000, and for some reason that company uh, you know, comes on hard times, can no longer operate, and has to liquidate everything and declares bankruptcy, okay? or declares bankruptcy and then goes through liquidation. Uh, creditors, basically people that those companies owe money to that want to get paid back, can't pursue you for anything. You are only responsible for the money that you invest initially, which would be your $1,000 investment. That's gone. You can't get it back. But you can't be pursued for your personal assets, which is certainly a benefit. And so that protects us in some way so we can invest in some of these companies, but we don't incur a great deal of risk. And so that is a, a significant benefit. Another benefit is that you do have a sense of what we call permanence. Because the owners uh, are, are stockholders, right? So we have shares of ownership. If any single person you know, were to were to pass away, that doesn't affect the the the, the extent to which the business continues to operate, uh, which is certainly a good thing. And so the business will continue to run uh, despite maybe one of the owners unfortunately passing away. Whereas with the sole proprietorship and a partnership, because the business and the person, the owner, are the same for all intents and purposes, then that creates some issues where we're running into, well, is the business going to continue to operate? And if so, how can it? So those are probably some of the more significant advantages of, of C corporations. There are a few others, but I just want to stick to some of the more prominent ones. Uh, so disadvantages. Like all forms of ownership, there are certainly disadvantages. The most notable one for a C corp is going to be what we call double taxation. And double taxation is a, a basic concept that basically follows the, the, the mindset that the profits of the business are going to be taxed once, uh, and then if they're paid to owners in the form of a dividend, they would be taxed again. Uh, so let me try and run through this real quick. Uh, we know that the money that a business brings in is obviously coined revenue. Uh, the money that flows out of the company are expenses. And there obviously are several subcategories within that. We're going to keep things fairly simplistic. Uh, and so the difference between the two is profit. Okay. Uh, on this profit, the money that an organization keeps, obviously it has to pay taxes. So that means that the government essentially wants their fair share, and so they're going to take a percentage. Out of that profit, the company can choose to pay what we call a dividend. And so a dividend is usually a quarterly payment, which means it occurs every three months. And it's a way of kind of rewarding uh, stockholders for investing in a company. And so they might say, okay, for every share you own, we're going to pay you 70 cents. And so obviously, if you own more shares, you get more money. If you don't own many shares, then it's not as significant. But it's a way of providing at least some guaranteed return uh, just in case the shares don't go up in value and they in fact go down. At least you get a little bit of money. Uh, so you get a dividend, which is great. Uh, the only problem, though, is you have to claim those dividends on your tax returns. So at the in the following year, you're going to get a, a 1099 form, and which is going to state that you received X amount of dollars in the form of a dividend, and you have to claim that on your personal tax return as income, so it does get taxed. Typically, it's a very low rate. It's usually around 15%. So it's, it's a lower rate for, for dividends and capital gains, uh, at least for certain tax brackets. Uh, but you still get taxed on it. And so that's where we get the term double taxation, because there is kind of one tax right here, the actual business itself is paying taxes on the money, and then we, as stockholders, are paying tax a second time on that money as well, which is how you get the term double taxation. So that's a significant disadvantage of a corporation. Uh, the last one, and the next one I should say, and the last, is the expense and complexity of formation. There's a reason that many businesses don't automatically jump to starting a C corporation. It's because they're very expensive. They can be multiple thousands of dollars and they have certain costs that have to be maintained. There's certain regulations that you have to abide by to maintain your C corporation status. 
Obviously, you have to create articles of incorporation, you have to create bylaws, you have to get a board of directors. These are very time-consuming operations and things that are going to take not only time but also money to do. And so that is an inherent disadvantage because for the most part, you're kind of small business and your entrepreneurs that are starting startup businesses aren't going to initially gravitate towards this form of business formation because of those very reasons, because it takes some time and there is some paperwork involved, quite a bit actually. And usually you're involving attorneys in different things, which as we know, kind of just jacks up the cost a little more. Um, so that is obviously a disadvantage and probably one of the reasons why more companies or more businesses rather don't initially go to this form of ownership, right? We, we like the idea of limited liability, right? Who wants to get sued for their personal assets so they can pay for things related to the business. But at the same point in time, you have to kind of weigh the cost and complexity versus the ease of, for, uh, the ease of formation as well. So uh, those are some of the advantages and disadvantages of C corporations. Those are certainly not all of them, but probably the more significant advantages and disadvantages that you will encounter with this form of business ownership.